Now here on the channel every week I do a live question and answer and I get a lot of questions from young people maybe buying their first car. They're looking for something practical, they're looking for something that's fun to drive and some cars they consider would be like the Honda Civic or the Honda Civic Hatch, maybe the Mazda 3 and I always say how about a Volkswagen Golf? Now sure you can go out and get a GTI or a Golf R but that's more expensive. If you're looking for good solid transportation here's some of the reasons why I suggest this car. 170 horsepower, almost 200 pound-feet of torque on regular gas, turbocharged engine, very practical body shape with a hatchback configuration, lots of room on the inside, above average interior materials and design and a car that actually handles well. So there it is, the Volkswagen Golf. Now here's the thing, I certainly wouldn't pick this green color and I probably wouldn't pick those wheels and I probably wouldn't pick this top Highline trim that we have here starting at $30,000. I would go kind of for the middle trim around $25,000 personally, I would get it in a different color and I would get it with the manual transmission. So this generation, the seventh generation of the Golf has been out for several years and it's won all kinds of awards. World Car of the Year, North American Car of the Year. This year for 2018 they give it a facelift, literally. The front of the car from the headlamps down has been updated, new headlamps, available LEDs, new grille, new bumper, new air openings. Around the back you get standard LED tail lamps and a new rear bumper as well. Not too much to talk about on the outside. Let's get inside and we'll take it for a drive. Now this car has been out for several years and I want to run through kind of the different trims, what you might want to look out for if you're considering this as a car. So the base model is called Trendline. Now there are two versions of that. The first one is really stripped down, not even heated seats in there and that starts around $20,000. For a couple grand more you get the second Trendline which does include more features. And that also is a three-door Golf, so two doors and the hatch. Most people get this configuration. Uh, that's proven to be the most popular. And that obviously is more expensive. Now on the base model cars, you get a six and a half inch screen. It does come with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay and does come with an automatic backup camera. One of the nice things about the Volkswagen Golf is the backup camera is hidden in the rear emblem. When you put the car in reverse, that emblem flips up, shows you the image and then retracts again after. Why is that important? Well, if you drive in rainy conditions or snowy conditions, that back camera can get dirty very quickly. And because it's hidden away, it's always clean. That is a great bonus if you choose a Golf. If you get the higher trims, you get the 8-inch screen that you see here. It definitely is worth considering. I think it's the one that I would get. However, with this car, you don't have the option to get the digital dashboard behind the steering wheel, analog gauges, and I'm totally fine with that. I've been on record as saying that I find those digital dashboards kind of gimmicky. Uh, you kind of set it and forget it, that's for you to decide. The highlight of the Golf overall, I have recently been in pretty much every Golf. I've been in the Golf R, the GTI, uh, also the All Track, and now this base model, and next week I'm getting the E-Golf, and they all have such a similar interior. The switch gear is the same, nicely finished, well put together, and the Golf as a practical car is right up there. The back seat is roomy, even for taller people. I'm six feet tall with plenty of headroom and just enough legroom. In the back, you get a very usable hatchback configuration and the seats fold down if you want even more storage. Now, if this isn't enough for you, you can also get the sport wagon, which is the station wagon version of the Golf. Standard seats are cloth, middle trim comes with faux leather, and this top Highline comes with leather and you can get a sunroof. So let's start it up, go for a drive and find out what's under the hood. Now there are several reasons why I suggest this car to people. First of all, it comes standard with a 1.8 liter turbocharged four-cylinder engine that runs on regular gas. 170 horsepower, almost 200 pound-feet of torque, 199. And you get either a five-speed manual or a six-speed Tiptronic transmission. Now in other cars in the Gulf family like the Alltrack, the GTI and the R, you can get a dual clutch. But this comes with the good old automatic Tiptronic, which has been around for a long time. Now you can leave it in drive or just pull the lever back and it goes into sport mode. When you're done with sport mode, you just pull the lever back and it goes into drive. That I use a lot. A couple of things this car does not have though, six speed manual transmission, not available in this car. If you want paddle shifters, it's not available. You gotta go to the GTI or some other products. So there's a couple of shortfalls there, but 
How does it all work together? Well, the engine, even though it says 170 horsepower, it's because of the 200 pound feet of torque that it feels much more lively in everyday situations. I gave a GTI back just a week ago, and then I got into this regular Golf, and I thought it would be a major step down and kind of a disappointment. In fact, it was the opposite. For everyday drivability, this is a really nice combination. And the fact it runs on regular gas is a major plus. For example, if you're looking at the Honda Civic hatchback, it requires premium fuel to get the most out of that engine. Other cars with similar horsepower would be the Mazda 3, and another strong competitor to this car is the Hyundai Elantra Sport with the independent rear suspension. And the reason I bring that up is because that's another part of the package with the Golf, is you get independent rear suspension and you get a good handling car. Now, depending on the tires you have, you have a little bit more compliant suspension. You roll it into the corners and you get some body roll, but with all Volkswagens, you get that. It gets to a point and then it becomes very controlled. If you want even more power and you want better handling, of course, you can opt for the GTI, which is not really much different in price than this top Highline trim. So in Canada, the Golf starts at around $20,000. This Highline, right around $30,000. There are a couple of packages to consider. One is the driver assist package. That's basically the suite of advanced safety features. That's $1,750. And the LED light package is around $800. I would opt for the LED headlamps. Personally, I wouldn't choose the advanced safety package and I would get the manual transmission. So for me, with a midline comfort line, it's gonna be right around $26,000. So that's something to chew on. So you can get a less expensive one if you choose. All of them have the same engine, all of them have the same available transmissions, and all of them have the same driving dynamics. Now, if you're gonna go for this top Highline that's right around $30,000, you really owe it to yourself to drive a base GTI, because a GTI starts at 31. You get 50 more horsepower, and you get a very nice handling car, so keep that in mind. Is this car perfect? No. Doesn't have a six-speed manual transmission, doesn't have paddle shifts if you want to get the Tiptronic, and it isn't available with the DSG in this configuration. However, if you're wanting good everyday solid transportation that runs on regular gas, this car is kind of hard to beat.